this, that the relationship between art and science, you can't hear me, I'll try and speak up, is that better? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Um, what I'd like to say is a couple of things. The relationship between art and science is historically, we go back to the Renaissance, the Baroque, and even earlier, we find there's a, a very deep connection between these two areas. In fact, there wasn't any division between them. Um, and probably, fortunately, in some ways, there has been a separation because it's meant that science is really as a paradigm, as a way that system of knowledge has been able to extend itself in a way that transcends possibly all other knowledge systems. And as an artist, I acknowledge that. And it's wonderful. Um, in my own practice, as a, somebody who's working across the two fields, I've become very interested in astronomy. Astronomy is probably the most visual of the science. Um, it's the area of science where, for, until recently, we weren't able to engage in an experimental, tactile way. So there's a, a relationship between the idea of astronomy as a visual experience and art as a visual experience. So how do I deal with that? Well, and I'm not going to talk too long about myself, but I want to give you a bit of context. I'm not interested in illustrating science, as a lot of people would do that well. And I'm not interested in uh, fictionalizing science. But I'm interested in ways of uh, using science, learning from science, and then using it as a kind of poetics, and as another way of uh, producing conceptual understandings. Now, I'd like to just quickly show you a piece that's exhibited in Melbourne at the moment. And it's called Water Table. Now this piece is a construction. Most of my work is more installation-based than photographic uh, flat images. This piece is based on the uh, science desk. Uh, it was an actual science desk that I purchased for my own work. Copied it, um, built it in mahogany, and on the top is a sheet of glass. It's been etched. It's, it's frosted glass. There's a little moat that runs around the edge that holds water and the glass hovers, it's suspended with images underneath. And the images depict details of prehistoric fossils and galaxies. There's a correlation that I've decided to use conceptually, and that is that if this fossil is 150 million years old, and this galaxy is 150 million light years away. So when that fossil was in existence, that light was leaving that galaxy at that time. The idea is that the viewer comes into the gallery, scoops out a little bit of water. <coughs> Sorry. The idea is that the viewer comes into the gallery, scoops out some water from the moat, puts it on top of the frosted glass, and that clears it. The water is a, a lens. The water is a primordial lens, it's the lens of our eye. And so this is the sort of work that I'm trying to make and uh, conceptualize. This is how I see a relationship between art and science work. Okay, this is work that's up in the moment in Melbourne. I won't go on with any more of that. 2007, I came to Flagstaff for a very short visit. I'd been reading a book on astronomy, the history of astronomy, and I'd been reading about Edwin Hubble. I was on the tour, we were in the, uh, looking at the Clark Telescope, and it pointed out to us was the spectroscope. I asked about that. Oh, Vesto had uh, taken the first readings of galaxies, and I, suddenly I knew that this was a really important thing. Because in the context of what I'd been reading, I hadn't heard about this uh, discovery, which is what it was, at the, um, at the Lowell Observatory. And I knew this was a really interesting and important point. I've carried that interest for a long time. The Lowell Observatory flag stuff itself is incredibly rich for an artist wanting to look at astronomy. So, what have I done here? Well, I was thinking about this important discovery and how it really has changed the way we view the universe and the theories that have emerged about the universe. And I didn't want to illustrate it, but what I wanted to talk about was the idea of this evolution, this rebel revolution, if you like, as being a part of a continuum in the way science has undergone many revolutions. We can think of Galileo with the telescope, and we can think of uh, earlier uh, conceptions about the universe and, and our place in it. So on this side of the room, I've placed some uh, images that draw from the early diagrams of people like Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, people like that. And I've drawn them into the Earth. I've drawn them as though we have this connection back to 
the earth, we haven't transcended that space. But they're also, the idea of drawing the earth is one of mapping out your ideas, mapping out your conceptions in the most immediate way. So that's what this work deals with. And on this side of the room, I've tried to encompass the idea of the, the post-redshift, the, the, the discovery and the consequential um, acceleration in new thinking, new conceptualizations, and mappings and modelings, and uh, that's what this work's about. So I haven't literally illustrated the discovery. I haven't literally tried to do that, but I've tried to hover around some of the ideas that have emerged before and after and the kind of context that we might consider today's conference, tomorrow's conference in. So um, without further ado, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you.